So I don't know what the like story or lore, I don't know what the gameplay of this is supposed to be. This is just a game that people seem to be super excited about, that have kind of been eyeballing, and just, I want to know what this is. All I have seen has been just like wide, wide area shots of just like desert terrain and a dude on a, on a land speeder. And I want to know what, what am I in for? I kind of got some Journey-esque vibes from this. And the art style is cool. That, that's it. That was the big thing that stood out to me above just about anything else. The clothing on this character kind of reminds me of, um, oh, what was the name of that game? Not Unraveled. Another unnamed game, like, un... Not unsighted. There's this game that was sort of like a Metroidvania, but you had, uh, like, like, summonable characters, or you could transform into other characters or something like that. And I think they had, like, more like turn-based JRPG battles. Does anybody does this ring a bell? Oh well. This game seems to be locked to the 30 FPS. Wait, wait, what was that all about? Poses? Oh, no, you're just... Just chilling. Blank, a blank-looking mask worn by all children of the dunes. Most kids customize theirs for fun, but more traditional clans frown on that sort of self-expression. My old Abexi top and hood. A hand-me-down from Yara. The scratchiness reminds me of whole Moldo. I, I... Like, uncomfortable clothing is the worst thing for me. Like, that's part of why I'm not looking go like, like lo not looking forward to going back to, to the office, because, like, having to wear, like, a regular shirt and jeans all the time rather than, like, sweatpants and an undershirt all the time, that's gonna be... that's gonna be a special kind of hell. Comfy sandals for exploring sandy places. Not the best for climbing. I wonder if that's gonna be a thing. So I have no idea what to expect of the gameplay for this game. Is this like Zelda-esque? Is this like 3D platformer exploration stuff? I think this is one of the first games that I've seen... Like, I, I know a lot of games that have, have done it, but the first one I think that I've played that I can think of in a long time where you have... Um, there's no interpolation on the character's like walk cycle and stuff. I think a few games have been doing that. A few 3D games have been doing that just to um, for the you know, for the effect. Just like, for example, uh, the recent Arc System Works games have been doing that. Like all of the like Dragon Ball Fighters and you know, like they have fully 3D models, but they're you know, all, everything, every frame is, you know, every keyframe, like, every anim animation frame is a keyframe, if that makes sense. Can 
Can I just climb anything? Seems like you can, yeah, because I can... Yeah. Oh man, that turn speed. I gotta... Can I, can I change that? I'll go, I'll go with my Dark Souls 7. <laughs> See, yeah, there we go. Actually, you know what? Like, let me because this is not an action game. Let me turn that back down. Oh, that was weird. Do you see that? Yeah. So, see, it says controls on the left, but it says S of X volume, music volume. So, this is something that I've seen in in games that I've worked on, where. Sometimes you have a mismatch, like, for example, if you restore your prior selection... Like, the left you know, the left side might be fine, but the right side doesn't load the correct section. I have literally fixed that in a game that I've worked on. So lots of little things like that when you're working on UI that like people don't necessarily think about right off the bat. I wonder if it's easier to climb these. Nope. Still expensive. What about ladders? Are la yeah, ladders are free. I wonder how much fall damage there is. Or if any. I should, <laughs> I should get up there and test that. We're gonna find out. Or no, I guess I can't, huh? Yeah, there's no way to get back up here. Or I doubt. Oh, the struggle is real. Okay. Alright, let's just jump. I don't think there's any fall damage. Okay, we got Dark Souls. Dark Souls or uh, every other... Can you roll? No? Okay. Standard hold circle sprint. Instead of the, uh, instead of tap L to, to sprint. Wonder why this game is 30 FPS though. I don't think it would look bad at 60. Even with the keyframe run cycle, because like camera camera stuff and, and Guilty Gear and stuff in Arc System Works games are at 60. They actually had they, they experimented with that too, and they decided that um, having a low frame rate camera change would be jarring. Oh, like I don't get a free sword? Okay. I'm hoping this is just me going too far off the beaten path, but my initial impression from this is I'm not sold. I mean, the art style is cool, and I, I want to know more about how they did it. I want to know if they adopted some of the techniques that Guilty Gear did. Or, well, I mean, everything from Arc System works nowadays, not just Guilty Gear, where they're like, they're basically hand painting the normals and everything. Or are these are textures, or are these are procedurally generated, or are they vector, or what? Um, like what? Uh, what are they doing to render this? You know, because it, it's clear, and the line thickness is the same, even further out, right? So what are they? What are they doing with this? I 
But we're outside of the visuals, which are cool. I'm curious what, uh, how this is going. Like, what what are they doing with this? I can feel. I wonder if it's Yachty or it's probably Yachty, right? I can feel Yachty smiling behind her mask, just as I know she can feel a teeth bearing little grimace behind mine. I'm nervous. And she softly, sweetly amused. In her eyes, in her eyes, I probably have very little to worry about. You know, you have nothing to worry about, don't you, Sable? And yet, I shrug. But any attempts to act casual are fruitless. The movement is jerky, and I don't think I've ever been more aware of my little shoulders. She laughs. I mean it. But I do, I do know how you are. You're going to be nervous until you've started, and then you'll act like you've been doing it your whole life. Oh, man, that's a description for me, all right. I actually got a screenshot that. That is... There is so much stuff that I build up into the biggest thing in the world in my head, and then when I get there, it's fine. And that's, like, how I live my life. I basically sit there. Everything I could break the ice with, get started with, haven't touched yet. Um, everything I'm driving up to, whatever it is. The entirety of my life is being is just making everything into a big deal and then getting there and it's fine. Remember the first time you rode a bike? You wouldn't even let me put you on the seat. You were so afraid. Your hands were like little claws gripping onto me. I feel the memory in my fingers. But then I promised you it was going to be alright. I told you how much I had loved riding my bike as a young woman. And how wonderful the wind felt through fabric. Suddenly you were there. You sat down, you, le you leaned forward, and put those little grasping claws in the handles, and you were off. And I remember thinking, just watching you tear over the sand. Look at her, she can do whatever she wants. Yadi reaches out and places a hand on the edge of my mask. And you can, Sable. I take a breath. I don't know where to start. Yachty's story warms me, but I feel too overwhelmed to let it settle. I tell her with a sigh that I don't know where to begin. She chuckles. Well, I can help with that. You'll need to talk to Halal and Driss. Driss should already have made the arrangements for your bike, and Halal will share something, well, let's say as useful as it is fun. Hmm? I think I might suspect what Yachty's saying, but I stay quiet. After that, I suppose we'll see you off. What if I choose the wrong path? I ask Yachty what will become of me if I choose the wrong path. There are no wrong paths, Sable. Or right ones. I'll be glad if you choose to stay with the Abexi. But truth be told, I'll be glad no matter what. So long as you're happy. Whenever you decide, you do so with my blessing. So don't try using me as an excuse to come home early, eh? She knows me. Now, go speak with Hoa. I'll be there to see you off. And speak to Driss as well. I told him to arrange your bike with with Cizo? It can't be Sizo. With Cizo, but you know how he is. I have something to give you, the compass. A compass to help you on your journey. It's the same one I used on my gilding. An artifact, you might say. I take the device in my palm. It fits naturally there, perfectly weighted and crafted. Each component slides together with incredible, satisfying precision. Thank you. Go on, go on. It's nearly time. Oh, that's cool. I like that style of compass. That's cool. And the, there's your north, too. Uh, I, so it's not only is it like a, what is it, diegetic? Um, I can never remember which is which. There's skewmorphic, polymorphic, diegetic, and uh, my brain, especially between skewmorphic, skewmorphic and polymorphic, I always get them reversed um, for UI style stuff. I think diegetic is the dead space one. What I, I like when I like this sort of stuff because it keeps you like when it's practical to do. I like it because it keeps you like focused in the game, keeps paying attention to your character and stuff. It's not always practical to do. I need to complete tasks for Halal and Driss. I 
Oh, they do the thing where they tell you which side face button it is, but they don't tell you which button name it is. So you don't get, you don't get confused figuring out what, uh, what console you're on. So that's another plus for the UI. Um, as I approach Halal, they give an enthusiastic wave. I've always appreciated Halal's verve and vigor, and on a day like this, I'm ready to match it. With a touch of nerves for balance. Sable, take this. Gliding stone. Halal hands me a small round stone. As it nestles into my palm, I feel a warmth not borrowed from Halal's hands, but emanating from within. I run my thumb over it and find it softly electric, like static on cloth. Uh, what's this? I try to sound less confused than I am, but ask Halal what this is. Oh, Sable, you can't leave without it. What I've just given you is a gliding stone. What do you feel? I tell Halal that I feel... Electricity? Then you're doing it right. What you feel in that stone is openness. I look at the stone. It seems quite closed. Gliding stones are vessels for the, for the perpetual. Did I, say, did I say gilding earlier and it was gliding? Gliding stones are vessels for the perpetual. They suck up its power like little sponges and hold it there for you to channel. Right now, it's empty or dormant and waiting for you to fill it up. I ask how I can do this. Take it to the temple runes at the edge of the canyon. You'll be able to activate it there. Hello claps their hands twice and bobs a little. I appreciate their good mood at a time like this. Come back to me once that's done. I want to hear all about it. As I'm about to leave, Halal stops me. Oh, you haven't gotten your bike yet, have you? It's a bit of a trek to the temple, so go see Driss. He was meant to get that ready for you, yes? I remember Yadi's words now and tell Hall I'll go and see Driss. I wonder if uh, if that's a lot of this. If this, if this is if the ba if the main focus of this game is a lot of the look of narration and uh, and the exploration. Like I haven't quite got a beat on what the like what the what the intent is for this game. Like I, I'm literally going into this almost blind. I've seen like random Twitter gifs, but that's about it. Like I, I, I don't really have a good idea of what this is all about yet. I kind of want to talk to you first. Oh, post box logging in. Hello, Sable. Unread messages. Have a good day. All right. I think this would be this would be Driss, I think. Oh no, that's Yachty, right? Hello, little glider. Uh, it's so strange being getting called that. I tell Yachty how strange it is being called glider instead of sable, or even clan child. Just trying to get you used to it. She seems to really like it, and maybe I like it too. My little glider. strange how few games uh, use face button notation to tell you which button to press. Like, this is so much friendlier than just being told, like, alright, I hit X, what button is that? I don't know, am I on a Nintendo console? Alright, hit hit A, alright, uh, wait, I'm on a PlayStation controller, what is that? Uh, you know. Being, being told just to hit, a, like, a face button is so much better for me. Sucks though for anybody who wants a game to be uh, console exclusive because you can't confuse your your players. So looking at the at the smoke here and the way they have the uh, like the outline on the on the result of the smoke, there is tutorials for this that I had looked at following for um, for one of my one of my cheer modes, where they basically say uh, you could take a bunch of circles, blur them out. And then um, you can basically like you can get it down to one bit alpha and one color. Like there's some there's like some special techniques you do to do stuff like this. This is probably not the best looking example for that, but they're basically just taking a bunch of circles. You could see at the bottom they're they're spawning a circle at a time. Um, but you can you can do some stuff to basically say they all merge together. They all have softer edges than this. Um, this is probably not the best example in the world for smoke. Um, but you basically blur them together to where the the edges of the circles are harder to understand. 
and then you do an effect on the on the then the result of that for the outline and you can get some great looking smoke so like yeah, here's a better example of it like you can't see, really see the individual circles as easily here but uh I always thought that was a, a neat touch for making like cartoon smoke of uh, basically you have such a simple way of, of doing it like just take a particle emitter make a bunch of circles uh blur them out and then um you you there was some sort of effect to like normalize the the colors to where the like you would undo the blur but the ed like you'd keep the soft you keep the soft and rounded edges because it was a really cool effect such a simple effect too now that uh here we go now that there's not just cheer emotes but there's animated twitch emotes it's uh, it's clear that I'm extremely far behind in getting all that stuff sorted out. I wanted to load up After Effects and have the next few um, have the next few emotes figured out. I think I'm in the wrong spot. I need to go get the, gl the glider first. I think it's over here. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so like I have. Like eight emotes, eight tier one emotes, and they all can be animated now. And I've animated two of my emotes for cheer emotes. And now basically that means that there's more of, of, an em of an emphasis now on getting animated emotes for my regular emotes. And then I need to have, I guess five new emotes figured out for cheer emotes if I want to make them. It's like, I this is too much work for me. <laughs> like, there's no way I'm going to get around to this. I don't have enough ideas for that many, I don't think. Though, I told myself to not be too eager. It's all I can do not to race up to Driss. Driss is the camp manager. He's been difficult to get a hold of lately. But now, I strongly suspect he's been working on my bike in secret. Perhaps it's extra beautiful or has some custom feature. What will its name be, I wonder? How fast will it go? Will my legs feel sore, or will I get used to it? Trist turns with a bit of a start. Sable! Uh, hello! Uh... Yadi sent me to speak with you? Did she? What about? I tell him it was something special... It was about something special, and then make a leading gesture slowly, trying to be perfectly cool and confidential, but I can't do it. I'm too keyed, and the words will spill out. I asked Driss if he might sort of possibly maybe have a bike for me. Your bike. He yells it like it's an idea he's just had. Your bike. Yes, of course, right. Yes, your bike. That's... That I was meant to... That I prefer to you. Prefer you. Because today is your... Uh, gliding, yes. I guess it was gliding the entire time. And I said gilding at one point. Driss nods along with me. Yes, of course. Right. Yeah. Yes. I have that. My blood runs cold. Has he forgotten? By which I mean I arranged it for you. It, uh, well, it's sort of a tutorial for you, old, uh... It's a, I'm gonna just play dumb. It's a tutorial? Yes, exactly. A learning experience. You see, Sable? Before one can own their own bike, they must prove that they can ride a bike by taking a test ride. On a different bike. I think about it, and find I've never heard of that part of the gliding. But Driss does seem earnest. Sort of. So instead of worrying about your bike, I'd like you to try this bike as a test. Driss gestures to the sand cutter at his side. It's quite old and a little shabby. A tester if I've if I've if ever I've seen one. Uh <laughs> what's the bike's name? Driss seems scandalized. That's a bit personal, don't you think? Just saying Ketter will do for now. Youngsters these days, always asking questions. Now, ride the bike through the ring and back. And here's some advice for you, my my young glider. Don't fall off. Don't lose your bike. When you're not riding it, your hover bike will appear as a blue icon on your compass. Okay. Ooh, fancy strafe. It's more of that smoke effect. 
So you, the fu- the funny thing is that the way that they're doing the shader for that, uh, conveniently, at the end of it, when the, the particles start to fade out, that's when you see um, the circles kind of reappear. It's like a very convenient effect for smoke. Somebody, somebody bothered me. Like, if I post this video on YouTube, somebody bothered me to, to grab a uh, a link to one of the tutorials for that for how the smoke effect is done. All right, I went through the circle. Just make the driss. Oh, is that okay? So I don't need to go up and get that stone figured out yet. I literally just need to go through through that through that circle and come back. I bet you Driss is scrambling to get my bike together. Or well, maybe not. I see parts. I made you a kit. Part of learning how to part of, of becoming a glider is to make your own bike. Here's the pieces. You can go. What's the uh here we go. Alright. You done yet? I returned to Driss, who somehow manages to seem caught off guard despite knowing I was coming. Sable, congratulations. How was your first pre-glide ride? Any strange rattles? Unexplained hissing? Small fires? What do you mean, fires? Surely you notice if you're on fire, even a little bit. So, a few years ago, I was so excited. I hadn't had waffles in so long. And I just never really... I'm more of a French toast kind of person if uh, if I'm making it myself. And I remember reaching into the toaster to grab my fresh waffles. And uh, the side of my hand pressed really solidly into the hot inside of my toaster. And at least a second passed before I realized what was going on. And I, I had... I had quite the scar for a bit, and uh, I don't think I necessarily would notice if I was on fire a little bit. Depends on whether or not there's waffles. Surely you notice if you're on fire even a little bit. Uh, was that a possibility? Well, obviously it didn't happen, so I think we're fine. Chris, is this bike dangerous? Well, he did. He doesn't finish. Have you already been by hello? Uh, uh, oh, right. I nearly forgotten about Halal, and thank Driss for the reminder, for at least nudging him a little about the bike. I asked him if he's, if I'm still, if I'll still be getting one. Well, you're still getting the use of the sand cutter. That's something, eh? You can borrow it to run your little errands. My little errands. And Halal's got something to show you. Help you out with, uh, more of that uh, mobility you're after. With my confidence in this exercise only lightly tarnished, I thank Doris very much for his help and his bike, and I depart for her wall. Did I not already speak to her wall? I don't know why I'm going back. I think I did things out of order in such a way as to mess up the objectives, and now I don't know. <laughs> now I don't know if I should try to go back to wherever that stone was. Is there any way to refer to that? Oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these turn off, but I, I should be doing these. I don't know what Halal wanted. Or I guess at least that's a task for Driss. Man, this this vehicle. Hold, I, hold on, I gotta double check this real quick. I think I just this is a thing that that I wanted to do in one of the games that I worked on. Let me see. I need to I need to get far enough away at, at the right angle. If these combine into one icon. Like, suddenly. Nah, never mind. 
So one of the games that I worked on, I wanted to do that. I wanted to make it to where if icons, if objective icons were too close. You would combine them just because it's like there's no purpose in having them to be all squished together. Especially if the icons are identical. Oh, I gotta just. I should probably get off of this thing and <laughs> just like leave it next to Driss for now. This is making it hard to, to navigate the camp. Yeah, let me do that. This is... This is a bit much. Especially for this thing being such a clunker. I'm definitely not a fan of this game running it at, at 30 FPS. The camera, like the camera, just feels like shit <laughs> at 30. 30 FPS camera sweeps just feel bad. Maybe I should have done that. That was rude. Maybe that's the thing that will allow me to toggle. Like the the, ca the 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 camera being at 30 FPS does not, and the movement being at 30 FPS does not contribute to the game. Like it doesn't contribute to the effect. of a bother. I'm assuming it's because it's probably meant to be, like, maybe they left the, the FPS cap for Switch or something. Head over to the temple, Sable. I promise it'll be worth the trip. Okay, well then Driz is just a douchebag. You told me to go here for no reason. I'm expecting this this uh, sand thing to whatever whatever the name of this thing is <laughs> the speeder. I'm, I'm expecting this thing to um, to break down by the time I get there. I'll have to just abandon it, and then run for monsters or something. I wonder if there's been like a GDC video or something, like something explaining how to do these climbing behaviors and how to make them work really well. I always thought that, that having free climbing on a game like this or Shadow of the Colossus or whatever was a big technical challenge. And I think maybe somebody figured it out and then everybody else everybody else has seen like a video or or uh, documentation or like a, a write-up on, on how to do it. And apparently maybe it's not that difficult. I mean, of course it's a challenge. Everything you do in game development is a challenge, but it's not like something that is so difficult that only one person can do it. Chum egg. Perfectly round and hard as a rock, these eggs seem to float with how light they are. There must be a good place to put these. That was an interesting animation. I don't know what to make of that. Oh, weird. It's like a... <laughs> it's it's a combination of like... Like an Among Us alien. 
the uh, the fox from Naruto and like a bird. I wonder what this is meant to be. It, oh, it kind of looks like it kind of looks like maybe one of the characters' masks. Oh, maybe you get wings when as part of the gliding ceremony or whatever. Oh, well. All right, well, me no fall damage. Okay, so I, I wasn't too worried. But yes, I am stuck. The uh, the pop in the LED pop in for some of these things is kind of strange. Like you look at that that shrub in the background. It's kind of jarring. For an art style like this, I don't know how you do LED and make it look good. Like how you do like smooth LEDs. The stone thrums like the beat of a heart as I approach the altar. Am I afraid? Yes and no. I'm ready for Rohana to know me. I'm ready to know myself. I feel her curiosity in the sacred I feel her curiosity in the sacred place. I know I am in her sight. Or what that flicker was all about. Press an old A to glide in midair. Oh, there's no wings at all, okay. Does it cost stamina to do? No. Well, that's strange. I got it, you don't have to remind me, I just did it. I demonstrated the ability to do it twice. I'm assuming I should go back, yeah. I, I would be willing to bet there's an achievement for gliding the entire way back. <laughs> but I do want to bring this back, this hunk of junk. The uh, sand blaster, or whatever this thing is called. 
the the not my glider the the where is my normal glider where's the one you promised me Driz drizzle whatever your name is I still don't know what to make of this game I don't know like Like the story, the, the the well, what little story I've seen, and more specifically, just the writing. I like the writing style a lot. I think the graphic style was interesting, but I really want a 60 FPS camera. I don't want to. I don't want the 30 FPS lock like this. Um, I'm not quite yet compelled. I like. This is this one of those games that I'd probably be willing? Like, I'd be more interested in watching just to see the story. I'm. I don't. So far, I'm not satisfied with interacting with it. I mean, the interactions are, are all right. They're, they're just serviceable. That they, they're not engaging for me yet. You know, I should take this over to Drias before he yells at me. You broke my personal hovercraft. I definitely think the art style is interesting, though. I just I haven't seen enough to to satisfy me just yet. Driz asked me a series. Driz, not Driz, asked me a series of increasingly strange questions before I make an excuse to take my leave. All right. There was a game called, I think Hylix. That so, like this game makes me want to take another look at Hylix. I think there's even two or three of those games now. Really, really surreal, just absurdist presentation for for sort of an Earthbound-esque RPG, and I, I... This game just puts it on my radar. Just makes me think about it. I asked why there's such an interest in Beatles in the first place, only to regret the next two minutes. At least she's enthusiastic about something. Well, that's the first I've heard about Beatles. Here we go. All right. When I return to Halal, it's clear they know what I've just experienced. They're excited on my behalf in a way that makes me miss them before I've even left. Isn't it incredible? How does it feel? Uh. Hmm. Strange. I'm a little queasy. I tell Halal that there is something a bit disorienting about it, and that I haven't quite understood the best how to best use it yet. Well, don't worry about that. There's plenty of time, and before long, you're going to be floating off cliff sides with impunity. Is that good? Trust me, you're going to love it. Halal's mood doesn't darken, but the sigh they let out holds a bit of sorrow. You're very lucky, you know. I miss it so much. That feeling, just floating on the breeze. But I suppose it's best that it fades with age, hmm? Or else I might never have come back from my gliding. Uh, I'd just be out there having heaving myself into chasms. I wish we could all do it. I tell Hoel that I wish something. It was something we could keep perpetually. So do I, Sable. So do I. I know people manage to keep it up, but I don't know how that... I've got the time to practice as much as they do. Or I, I don't know, but I, I don't know them, that I've got as, the time to practice as much as they do. It takes a really serious focus. Halal laughs, even if there's a bit of regret in it. And I certainly haven't got that. Still, I suppose the gliding would mean much if we were all, if we're all gains and no loss, hmm? 
I think about that, but decide that there is already too much loss on my mind to consider it much further. I am saying goodbye to my clan, my family, my home, my childhood. To lose the perpetual is a sacrifice for another time. You're going to love it out there, Sable, even when you don't. My advice, try to have fun. There's a lot to be said about ritual and independence and all that uh, out there. But the world's an easier place if you put joy first. I thank Halal for their advice and for their help and tell them I'll miss them. It'll be over before you know it. A warning and a reinsurance all at one. All in one. I say goodbye to Halal. Before I go, Halal gestures towards the tower. It seems Caesar wishes to see me before I leave the clan. Oh man, I want to like I want to know what this is setting me up for. Definitely something I don't quite understand yet. It's this game overall. As a low ceiling. Look at that. I'm always weary of low ceilings in games. Too many games trying to crush me. That's what I get for playing mostly action games. Oh, that's what that's all about. I'm putting money away in a bank. Or, or whatever that is. Experience? Cizo is an outclaner to the Abexi, but I've known her for nearly as long as I can recall. And think of her more as a kind of distant relation than any, any sort of outsider. Machinists, I'm told, are given their posts, and by their training and their code, must go to where they are needed. But Cizo has been among us so long that it's easy to forget it's an assignment first and foremost. As far as any of us are concerned, she is one of us. I think there is a perception among other clans that the Abexi are quite insular, or that our designation of Abexi versus outclaners su suggests some nervous othering of those who are unlike us. But in practice, such things are more the result of our nomadic nature. We seek to know who will travel with us, who we must leave behind, and who we must leave behind, but all are welcome to join. And I'm always pleased that Cizo did. Sable, how do you do, clan child? I can only think of one thing. Uh, a bit worried. Am I really getting a bike? Cizo has a throaty quality to her voice, and it rumbles through her mask when she laughs. She's quite a serious person most days, and I'm always torn between pride and alarm when I manage to make her chuckle. Yes, Yadi told me how excited you were. Cizo sniffs. She also told me Driss would be coming along to get your bite together. But I think he may have... I knew it. What? I hadn't meant to say that out loud, so I'd tell her I was just clearing my throat. I don't regret Driss... His regret... His regret... Forgetfulness. Were I tasked with so many odds and ends, I might be just as scattered. And besides, this will be good for you. I want you to scavenge the hoverbike parts yourself. Uh, I'm gonna make my own hoverbike? I asked Cizo if I'm expected to make my own hoverbike. No, you're not gonna make your hoverbike. You're going to build your own hoverbike. Uh, of course. To make suggests you're creating something, but your bike already exists. They simply haven't taken form yet. Here, take this. Caesar hands me something. This is a navigator. You can use it to mark waypoints on your compass. It should be useful for finding the old parts. I ask Caesar where I might start looking. Our bikes are reborn from the ruined ships, and fragments spread apart. A good start would be the ship down there near the camp. You'll find another up that great rock, near the other side of the canyon and another behind the old dam on the hill. Use your navigator to mark that down if you need. You'll need to gather a control panel, a power supply, and a calibrator. Do most gliders make their own bikes? I ask Cizo if gliders really make their own bikes. Only the lucky ones. I tell Cizo I'll see her soon and head off in search of the components. Together, we will create something new out of the old. Alright, you... Using your navigator. Press RB to use the navigator to mark interesting landmarks that appear in your compass. 
You can add and remove markers from the map screen. Try placing it didn't get, didn't get a chance to read that. Great, okay. Uh, I, I, I don't know how to do what I'm doing with this. Am I just moving it up? Oh, I see. Or, um, I don't know. I don't, I don't quite get what I'm looking at. Like, wh what is this attaching to? I can't see the ground. I don't know what I'm marking. So she said, like, this this thing is incredibly confusing to use. One is a dam out there somewhere. Hold on, let's, let's say this again. Control panel, power supply, calibrator. Ah, uh, you suck. You were pointing at a dam and I lost track of it. But, okay, the line should the line should end at the end of the radius. That might be, that would make way more sense. I think something's over here. Ah, okay, hold on a sec. Ah, damn it! I literally forgot what you just told me. Crap. Well. Screw it. One was a machine really close like this or something, I don't know. The balloon was more fun than the person in it. Approach the cartographer. Ah, greetings, child. I saw you looking longingly at my great balloon. Quite a piece of work, isn't she? Uh, as bigger than I thought. I tried to explain that when I first saw the balloon, I thought it was very small and somewhat far away. But now I see it's quite large and very far away. I fumble through the explanation, though, and the cartographer just nods without saying anything. I nod back. Well, good to meet you, and oh, I should introduce myself. I'm Jordan. I tell him I'm Sable. Suppose if you've come all this way to see me, it's probably a map you're after. Eh, Sable? I love a map. I tell the cartographer I love a map. Of course you would. That'll be 50 cuts. If you're leaving on your gliding sable, you'll definitely need a map of the error, at least. Error? And I'll sell you one for only 50 cuts. To my ears, it's a fair price for a map, but too expensive for a pre-gliding glider with empty pockets. I tell Jordan I'll be back. I'll need to ask Yachty for some money. Farewell, child. I have... I, if, if that's the resource that I got, I probably have a few. Crap. So something was a dam. Something was a... I'm go this is probably the dam right here. I'm running to it. I don't even care. Screw it. This is a stupid idea for stupid jerk, but we're doing it. This is a stupid idea. I gotta go back. Just mark this thing. That. Or, oh, you're doing it the direction I'm facing, not the not the camera direction. Uh alright, fine. The camera direction is the important one. This tool, though, not having, like... The fact that the line goes out on... It follows the ground and then sticks out. It's hard for me to understand that. Like, I get it now that I'm staring at it, but like on the way in, it's like, what am I looking at?
think this is the, one of the first strangely named currencies that I've seen in a while, ever since. Uh, so this one's called Cuts. In Kenshi, it's called Cats. And everything else you see in games is like Gil or Gold or GP or Credits or whatever. It's very rare you see like an, an, like an extra type of currency. Alright, so I believe this is a dam. I'm assuming that this is a dam. And somewhere in here I need something, uh, some part. Like one was a control panel, so let's pretend I'm going to get that first. Simple enough so far. And yeah, this camera does not want to cooperate. <laughs> it just, the camera's like, I need a break. It's like me. It's like me chasing somebody up upstairs. It's just like, man, I need to. I need to rest. Okay, there's a part. That's one. I'm assuming that uh, this is probably all I'm going to find here. I could be wrong. They, they just say find stuff in Rex, so... That's probably the one. A dam, some sort of like nearby wreck, and then something. I, I don't even know what the other one was. Tower? Something in the tower? I've already put this one down. I can't even look at it. I give up. Okay. So, I did that one. thinking there's going to be some sort of like major disruption event in this game like uh you know how like echo the dolphin starts super chill and super calm it's like oh cool i'm a dolphin i'm swimming around and stuff and then like everything goes to hell <laughs> like that's how i'm expecting this game to be i'm expecting to be like super chill super relaxed don't really expect anything of you you're doing some mundane stuff and then suddenly like catastrophe I'm just expecting they're like buttering me up. This is just is like designed to just to like lower my guard a bit.
I don't want to jump. I don't want to jump backwards, but I want to get off that ledge. All right. Here we go. Surely this will be whatever piece of stuff I need, right? Right up here somewhere. Oh, there's money. Well, I have 50 now, assuming those are cuts. Ooh, okay, power supply. It's the first time I've needed to crouch, like, ever. <laughs> ever since the tutorial. Okay, so that's done. Where was the third piece then? I'm hoping for a big payoff because like setting me on a big There's the dam. Or I think it's the dam. What is this? Setting me up on a big like fetch quest so early. <laughs> They, they have to have some payoff for that. Because it's, it's cool to look at the world and everything, but, like... I, if they're gonna... If they're gonna win me over, the, like the, either the story is... There's gotta be a big story reveal... There's gotta be some more, like, better... more scenes to look at that are cool to look at. Like, there's gotta be something, like, there's gotta be a hook, you know? You know, the, the gameplay is not selling me. Not yet. So there's gotta be more to it than that. The writing could be good, but there's not a lot of it yet. Like, I like the, I like the dialogue a lot. Mess that up. Climbing is a little bit frustrating. <laughs> like, you tend to slide off. Okay. Let this be something, right? Let this be my last object. Oh, it's you. One of these um, special eggs. Chum egg. If they had a lot more stuff, like weird stuff like this, that would get my attention, you know? Like, not that I want just ex exploration to be the goal for me. I like it when it's a means to an end. I don't think I like it for just... just for what it is. Yeah, that structure seems to be what I'm looking for. I think this is just the one that was at, right? Pretty sure. Yeah, this is where I came in.
I don't think the calibrators are over there. Maybe they mean, like, behind it. I I feel like I marked some of this. I, I might have mis... <laughs> might have misclicked this? Yeah. Yeah, whatever it is, it's further out than, than I can go. So there's going to be some other wreck or some old tech that I can salvage. They said tower. So I did the dam, I did a, like, a turret. I said, there's the dam. I don't know if the turret was a tower. Not being able to refer back to this... Is there, like, a dialogue reference or something? Yeah, whatever that blue thing is, is not part of the quest. I could swear there was a mention of a tower. I might be wrong. Just gonna browse and see if I could find it. I think I just went into this one, right? With a weird turret thing? Honestly, looking at it now, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know what it is where the camera starts zooming in on you when you get, uh, when you're trying to grab a wall. I gotta stop pressing. So I, I'm pressing Xbox A like I can do one final jump, and that doesn't do doesn't do what I would think it should do. I think I was already here. This is where these areas being somewhat non-distinct for me. Look, the dam is recognizable. This thing I don't know if counted as a turret or what. Oh no, this is the this is the temple I went into earlier, so this is nothing. I've already been here. So there's some other structure <laughs> that I just cannot bring. I can swear I was like over there or something. This is definitely like a struggle to for my attention span. I think I might need to go back and look up what people were saying about this game and see like what the hook was. If this one has that turret looking thing, then I've already been here. It's got that, that, that thing over there, that tube. I'm like 99%- oh camera please, I'm 99% sure I've already been here. With like the wing or whatever. Uh, just for just to be thorough, uh, so dumb. I have to go back here again. I've already. I went, I'm pretty sure I already went up here. I'll. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna put that down for a minute. I'll come back. Hope I'm not wrong. But yeah, just to, to reiterate, I'm definitely unsure what. The, the way people were talking about this game made me think that there was something uh, almost revolutionary in it and its existence. And so far, the art style is really unique and interesting. But what they've done with that art style is not extremely elaborate yet. And I think it might just be the demo is just not doing it. And the demo maybe is not doing its job. And that's where I kind of want to look back and look at like trailers and stuff. And it's very possible that 
I think this might be the one that I skipped. If this is, if I can enter this, yeah. I think maybe the demo is not doing this game justice. Oh, somebody wants to talk to me. It'll be a fighter pilot. Hold on a sec before we go and launch out of the space real quick. Yeah. There's nothing of use to be found in the ship, but I notice a blinking light flashing on the dashboard of the cockpit. Push the button. A voice crackles from the machinery in front of me. It sounds like recording. It is barely audible. Stop messing about with those buttons, you absolute idiot. The distinct sound of someone slapping somebody else's hand crackles out of the speakers. Sorry, Raman. Concentrate. I don't think I had to remind you how much work it was to get this far. We're almost there. Alright, let's see what that old machinist told us holds up. If not, there will be hell to pay. Some sort of mechanical adjustments seem to be being made. I hear the sound of three clicks. Buttons being pressed, perhaps. Okay, when I push this orange thing, pull that lever hard. Yes, Raman. The sound of a click and a loud grunt before a snapping sound. Oh, on Rahana's mask. Not that hard. You've torn it out. Suddenly the speakers were filled with static, crackling, and a low rumble that seemed to gradually increase in pitch and frequency, from, and then the sounds of someone cheering. It works! We're flying! What sounds like an ungainly person dancing around on a metal surface plays out. Okay, okay, let's focus. This thing is moving fast. We need to slow it down a bit. How do we do that, Raman? Let me check what the machinist wrote down for us. A long pause, the whining static sound that started playing when the ship took off seems to be increasing in frequency. It sounds like the ship is picking up pace. Suddenly, what sounds like someone pulling and pushing on every button they can they can as quickly as possible plays out. Raman? That lever you just ripped out, Toma? That was how we slow this thing down. We're going too fast. We're going to crash. We need to try to... The recording cuts off there. Alright. So... I wonder if that means they got outside of the atmosphere or not. And this is them crashing back down. I wonder... Where's the lever? Hold on a sec. Where's the lever? Is there a broken lever somewhere? Nothing that I can see. Oh. What's this? Are we having a moment? Are you looking for a caliber? I am, I think. I'm. It's one of three things, maybe? Right? I nod, and Saima looks gleeful. She has always been the mischief maker. You won't find it here. I've hidden it. You'll never find it. Never, never. <laughs> you, uh, we're, we're going, we're going ham on this. You're a horrible child. Saima laughs off my irritation. I compose myself. I'm not going to give her the satisfaction. I'll give you the calibrator. I'll give it to you. But I want some beetles. That's a fair trade, isn't it? Something you want for something I want. Beetles? I stifle a sigh. Perhaps some of the adults in the camp know where I can find some. Alright, yeah. I, I figured it would be something like this. If this game was oriented towards those type of quests, then I figured that at some point, one of those fetch quest objectives would be more elaborate than the other. So far, some of the stuff feels kind of very by the numbers. I, I don't feel... I don't feel necessarily impressed by what they've done quest-wise yet. Or even, like, destination-wise. Like, the aesthetic is cool, but I don't. I feel like they can do more with it than they have. And I, I'd wonder if maybe they, like... So, so demos oftentimes have to strike a balance between trying to figure out, like, you need to give the player enough of the game to, like, to give them... to sell them on it, right? But you can't give them the coolest stuff, because otherwise, why would they buy the game? And I wonder if this is one of the games that's that's made the mistake of going too far in a cautious direction and decided to not give the player enough to excite them just so that they have more to save for the rest of the, like, for the release. Because, like, right now I'm just, like, driving around on a sand speeder thing, picking up random objects. And the, the climbing, the climbing works, but it's, like, the climbing could be paired with something with the rest of the experience being more engaging. And like for example, like more more of the the, the well like the, the satisfying dialogue would be nice. But there's been so much travel time between that. 
that. Okay, I haven't had enough of that to sell me on it yet. Alright. Hey, I need cuts. Oh, wait, I have cuts. I could ask about catching beetles for Saima. That wretched child. Uh... Do you know about Saima's hiding place? I know she spends a lot of time in the cave under the camp. You can have a look down there. I tell Yadi that the cartographer wants 50 cuts for a map of the of the Ewer. I try to hedge the way I speak about this, as I'm not entirely sure whether that's too much. Too much, not enough, or precisely its value. She tells me not to worry. Here's some money to get you going on your journey. Use it mostly wisely, and then a little unwisely when the mood strikes. It's good to know the value of money, but you never want to be ruled by it. I think I think Yadi effus effusively? And head out on my way. Thanks for money that I shouldn't have asked for, and I didn't want to ask for. I, I'm, I'm independent. I'm an independent sable, and I got the money. Without you know, how much money do I have? 160. Yeah, I got 60 without her intervention. And now I'm like, I shouldn't be asking for it. I don't need the extra hundred. So now I need to find something extra frivolous to satisfy. Alright, so under the camp somewhere is my object. Oh. Alright, you. Yeah, I'm not I'm not finding your Oh, I broke the camera a little bit. Yoink. I do like how they give you the option to even skip the stupid beetle quest. <laughs> like I could, I could see if I was a bit more sold by the game, I would be jumping to, for the beetle quest to pick up some random beetles, but it's like... I'm not quite satisfied yet, and I, I want to advance this to the point... I want to advance this quick enough to see what the good parts are. Like, what's going to grasp me? So yeah, I'm, I'm in a bit of a hurry to get to whatever that ends up being. And I'm assuming there's like going to be a big reveal or a big thing that happens. Where, whenever I get this bike put together, hopefully it's not such a clunker like my current one. My current loader. As she looks out across the landscape, Zeki's shoulders sag a little. I wonder what she's thinking about. Something on your mind? Zeki's voice is weakly incredulous. I don't know how she's done it. That Ari over there. I follow her gaze to a little speck in the distance, which I now understand is her daughter, Alaria. Uh, does she need help? Azeki shakes her head. No, she's fine. And I'll get her. I'm just... <laughs> she shrugs. Parenting. Suppose I'll know more about that when I'm older. We have a short chat about nothing much in particular. I say goodbye to Zeki. It was really rare for me to go out and, like, have, like, have just, like, you know, hang out with a friend for lunch or whatever during, like, during work hours and stuff. And, uh, in, in 2020 and 2021, it's been, yeah, it's been a non-thing, right? It's been, you know, there's no going out at all. But even though I barely ever went out to meet up with friends and everything, like, all my friends are, like, other countries outside of the, you know, other states, other countries, whatever. Um, so it's very rare for me to be able to meet up with anybody in person. Um, the few times I've been able to, I do kind of miss. Greetings, child. I'll buy that map. Perfect. Let's trade then. Ah, I seem to have nothing left for you. I think, uh, Jordan, for the Ewer map and all its vast possibilities. Something about this makes it feel more real. Good luck on your gliding, Sable. I still remember mine. I ask how it was. Short. I knew since I was a boy that cartography was for me, but I spent a little extra time out there just to enjoy the world. Speaking of, 
I keep an eye on the skies, eh? Or speaking of, keep an eye on the skies, eh? Plenty of my colleagues out there, and they'll have more maps to sell you. From Hakua to the Sodic Waste. I thank Jordan for the tip, and say goodbye. Very well, child. Alright, well, I guess in that case then, I, I left my... I left the loader over here next to Driss, so... Here we are. I'm assuming I'm going to finish this, like, finish building the bike and drive out to maybe one more area, and that'll probably be the end of the demo. Driss asked me a series of increasingly strange questions, yeah. Wait, but I have the materials for my bike. Oh, oh, Cizo. All right. Do you have something new for me? Yanni greets me warmly. Hello, little glider. Uh, <laughs> that's big glider to you. I tell Yanni I'm actually a big glider. She laughs. You're right. You are. Sable, noted adult and big glider. I'll keep that in mind. Wonder if they have weight limits on gliding powers. <laughs> like. If there was gliding magic, would I would it be better or worse for for me to be as fat as I am? <laughs> like, do, does does more mass equal more gliding power? Like, are you just converting everything to negative gravity? I return to Caesar with the parts, and it's as she wheels me over that I feel a pang of sadness in my chest. When will I see her again? Once I'm home, once I'm gone. Well done, Sable. Yes, this is everything we need. Are you ready to assemble a bike of your own? Uh, sure. Then let us head to the workshop. One of my, like, failed COVID-era goals is to lose a weight, and it's just not happening. Cizo relaxes in the workshop. It isn't that she's particularly rigid or anxious ordinarily, but there's a certain calm beauty in, in that one only truly appreciates when Cizo is in her element. I wonder if it's this way for all machinists. What you must understand, Sable, is that the components you've acquired, they fit together. Not by chance, not by effort, but by nature. They belong to her. They have always belonged to her. All we are doing is assembling her from what she has already been. I nod, and I feel a soft buzzing in my ears. Among my clan, we believe that machines have names, held for ages like deep secrets, unheard by those unequipped to listen. We will find this one's name together. Assemble machine. Okay, what do you want me to do? Tell me what you want. Cizo relaxes in the workshop. It isn't that she's particularly rigid or anxious ordinarily, but this is calm beauty. Okay. Well, she says they fit together on their own. I'm just going to go and just grab a piece and throw it in there and hope for the best. I'm not throwing this. It looks a lot more advanced than the uh, the clunker that I had earlier. Listen. Cizo tilts her head a moment, leaning closer to Samoon. All at once, I knew I know the hoverbike's name, Samoon. I say it in a whisper to let Cizo know. Sea Moon. Well done, Sable. What does it mean? What does it mean? You should ask her herself. Has ask her yourself. Cizo looks entirely serious. The bike, to my enduring surprise, says nothing. Even when I lean close, I tell Simoon 
that I am eager to know her better, and Caesar looks quite proudly at the both of us. You are ready, then, for the gliding. May all the gods turn their faces from you, Sable. An odd blessing, perhaps, but Caesar is prone to such things, and I can read in her tone that it was meant quite sweetly. You must learn to listen to Sea Moon, to care for her. Seek out my fellow machinists on your travels, Sable. They will teach you the art of machine whispering. Oh, and here, take this. It's a machinist badge. You'll meet plenty of my ilk on your gliding. Show them your worth, and they'll give you more badges. I think Caesar twice for good measure and give a bow. I am ready. Are they gonna zoom out to the title, the uh, the logo shot? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'm. It's intriguing. It hasn't quite hooked me yet. Like I, I, I need to know. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing like what the primary engaging portion of this game ends up being. Like, is the story, the dialogue, going to be really good? Are the different biomes and the rest of the world going to be great? Um, is the gameplay going to get really interesting mechanically? You know, I haven't, those questions haven't quite been answered yet. I've seen glimpses of things, right? But I'm not sure, I don't know what to make of this yet. And I, what I want to do now is I want to go back and look at some, like, either trailer stuff or I want to see some, like, developer posts, um... I, w I want to know sort of just like what people are talking about. What's what's the big thing for this game? Because I kind of see a start, but I don't quite see enough yet to grab my attention yet. 